So the next games will be FBB versus Steel. Ah. Uh. Now the Who's funny this thing is steel? that FBB is Fuzzy Blue Baron, except he seems to be yellow. Yellow is a pretty color. Okay. Sure. Mm. Protoss fight better when they feel pretty. I can't deny that. Yellow is also the color of the campaign Protoss in the first StarCraft game. Ah, yeah, unconscious bias right there. So, Steel builds a supply depot. Steel, the red Terran, on the bottom right, builds a supply depot before an SCV. And a gas before, before a barracks. And FVB, the yellow Protoss, is building a pylon. Yeah. Probe gets ready to build a gateway. Yeah, nothing much to say at this early part of the game. Neither of the players sending a super early scout. Not that you need I'm one. I'm not sure I'd know what to do with it if I sent one. Well, in general, what you want to look for with a really early scout is to see if your opponent is mining gas and if they're you doing normal tech. With Terran, you're not going to see that many surprises because most tech will be a barracks and a gas. But sometimes you'll see an engineering bay if you're playing against a lunatic, and sometimes you'll see nothing if you're playing against someone who wants to build barracks in the wrong place. Like, on <laughs> your side of the map. But Steel is being very normal with uh, Reaper. Cybernetics Corn Forge from Fuzzy. Now if you see a Protoss who just has a forge, you're getting cannon rushed. But a barracks and a forge doesn't necessarily mean much. What? I'm just thinking for cannon rush is something I should try someday. Well, Reaper's on his way out. He does need to get there before the Stalker if he wants to do much damage, because a Stalker beats a Reaper very easily. He'll climb the cliff just as the Stalker comes out, but the Stalker runs to the wrong side. That was rallied down below. Yeah. Okay, and the Stalker's... Stalker chases the Reaper, who's just being very annoying. Now the fun thing about Reaper, and I say that crying inside, is that Reapers heal. Wait, what? Once they're out of combat, they heal. So instead of building a Reaper wall, uh, Fuzzy's just building a cannon on the high ground where the Reapers jump in. And that'll actually solve Reaper problems. But uh, in general, on this map, you could you could build your buildings in a way that blocks the reapers and it doesn't fully solve the reaper problem because the reaper comes in throws a grenade in. <laughs> kills a One probe, probe down. And... and is going to get gunned down so it looks like steel is going for an early battle cruiser which is Terran for I'm a giant asshole and a, com I mean, and a it, high it, ground it, command it, center behind it and it, this is still we're talking about yeah 
Steel likes to do dickhead plays. Which yeah, I, I, I can I, I can appreciate. You know, I've, 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 you, you, you corrected me a while back on dropping too many dickhead pylons, but for a while there they were fun. No, if, if you want to do them, do them. They're, they can they can be great. Just understand what you're losing with when you do them. But I, I have so, to say that that little encounter with the Reaper there, I think that was one of the first games I'd ever had a Reaper come in and not lost my cool over it. So, uh, at this point in the game, I was feeling very pleased with myself. Yeah, and now it. you're going to start to feel very unpleased with yourself when you see a battle cruiser in your main when you have three yes. stalkers and a sentry over here. So, Fuzzy immediately reacts, sends the three stalkers up, and I'm not sure how three stalkers do against the battle cruiser, but it does look like they're not doing very well. Three probes come in for moral support, and they all leave, just leaving the defenseless probes to die. That's five stalkers. That should actually be enough to kill the battle cruiser. But it did a lot of damage. Yeah, it did a lot of damage. And unfortunately, there are two more on the way. One... Yeah. So I think I figured out Steel's tactic for this game. If Steel really wants to bring it up a level, one thing he can do is research Yamato. but Steel is doing this with zero upgrades. It does need more gas mining to keep up production on two, on two starports making battle cruisers. Now the thing with what Steel has is that it's very fragile because there's no wall here. There's nothing to stop two zealots from coming in and just ruining everything here. Mm. But that's part of what happens when you play Dickhead. You can you can make these gambles because your opponent just gets so nervous. Yes, I, I think even more experience out of run run some more troops into pressure him. But yeah. now five stalkers could have been enough for one battle cruiser. They're not enough for two. No. This gets exponentially more difficult the more battle cruisers there are. And yeah, Steel is getting Yamato. So the battle cruisers are just gonna sit in the main. I'm gonna have themselves and pretty good time. What watch it what this is where I, I'm trying to get them to take the bottom battle cruiser, but they can't. Battle cruiser is just out of range, and so they decide to attack the other one. Yeah, but in general, you shouldn't be moving four battle four stalkers in to kill this. You should be saving. You should be using your nexus uh, energy and chrono boost chrono thingy. Boosting the gates. And then the gates? Warping, bring in eight to focus bring fire in and eight kill. eight or yeah. twelve. And taking some damage, but at this point you're on zero workers. And you've lost. Yep. I think also there's some there's a psychological element to the yes. constant battering of that the set just the sound of the battle cruisers laser guns yes you lose your mind when you're constantly harassed and constantly under pressure and it gets very hard to play a normal game i i fully agree i wish there was a way to oh just oh i think i have a particular something for every time i fought battle cruisers the the sound of their laser batteries going off yeah 
the constant pew 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 pew. Another good thing to do, especially because you get an you you get a safety forge, which isn't always which isn't really necessary, but if you already have it, a cannon and a battery and every mineral line will really protect you from air attacks. So, on the top right, not praising the sun, is Fuzzy Blue Baron. <laughs> on the bottom left, praising it and blazing it, is Steel. Now, you get a cookie if you can guess what Steel does this round. Um, I'm gonna guess something dickish. How did you know? But seeing as it's a gateway now, it's, it's probably not a. Uh, for, it's probably not a cannon rush. I would like to see something with Dark Templar because I like Dark Templar. But it could be a lot of things. Steel is a. Um... A multifaceted cheeser. That's the best kind. When you don't know what you're gonna be up against, you just know it's gonna be terrible. Okay, so what I like started. about Steel's play is that he very clearly has a goal in mind. He built that cybernetics core almost immediately after the gateway. He's going probably going to follow that, that up with something. Anyway, you were saying? I'm sorry. I was saying he's got his gateway up and cybernetics core coming in. Meanwhile, we have a complete wall off on the top. Yeah, is that my imagination or is this a wall off that not even a probe can pass through? Correct. Which is why there is a sneaky probe that's already made his way out of the wall. Yeah, this is actually a great base. Again, if you wanna, if you wanna play like a dickhead, this is a great base for it. It's isolated. There's no reason for units to go there unless they're going there specifically, and you can put a stargate and just bring out, if you know, send void rays out of it. Now, Steel has a innocent probe that is bringing a housewarming gift. Yep. It's going to build a pylon and go away. Which is going to be very nice, considering the dark shrine that's on the way. Now, just curious... No, there is no warp gate yet. But if Steel is really serious about being a dickhead... Warp Gate would be an amazing upgrade. Now, I want to ask you a question. Have you noticed anything about my wall off yet? Your wall off? Mm. You're building it's, zealots it's, it's, outside of it. It's a complete wall off, so nothing can pass through it. Mm -hmm. Airtight. It is impregnable. Yeah, except if there's, like, Dark Templars attacking and then you can't see them. Because there's no cannons. Yeah. You generally don't need a cannon in a wall-off, but... Considering you also have... No Robo, and you've just completely walled off your... Third, too? Yes. Now, at uh. this stage, I... I was suspicious that um, I may be dealing with because I, I haven't seen a cannon rush at this stage so I'm like well what else does what, what else is in Steel's playbook and I, I know he DT rushed um, Iran in a previous week so so that yeah that could have been something to worry for to worry about but, but there the the fun uh, no thing cannons. in Protoss 
is that Protoss has all the cheeses. You can proxy Void Rays. You can... You can make a War Prism and then just spawn Zealots in your enemy's mineral line. You can do endless things in StarCraft 2 that are just kind of nasty with Protoss. Okay, now he's got four gateways and Warp Gate is just about to finish. For instance, you could just send Zealots into your opponent's, two Zealots into your opponent's mineral line and capitalize on them being a cheeser who doesn't know how to defend. And here and, comes the first. Yeah, and now you've killed probes and you have scouting information. And I've also, because of my cannon, seen that he's up here. Yeah. However... However, these are two uh, cannons too late. The cannons go down because at this stage I had the... Oh crap, I forgot to build cannons. Why did I not build cannons in my total wall off? But by then it is well too late. Yeah. And Dark Templars kill the pylon. And also defend the zealot, but I think they do that by accident. <laughs> That could actually be cute to surround a zealot with Dark Templars and just like kill the enemy zealots trying to get at him. And the Dark Templars focus on the buildings. And that's the GG. Yep. Now instead of a GG, oh, right, just what you could do oh, is no, move all of your probes to the same place and recall them to the other Nexus. Mm, because he didn't know about them. This is why I said, hey, let's take you a road trip to show you. Oh. And at this stage, because um, Steel and I are both in voice chat, Steel was going, what the fuck? So that is something that you could have done if you wanted to continue the game and possibly even win because you're against a cheeser who probably can't macro very well. Yeah, so this 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 was... Um, you can see the... the the first Stargate up here, the, the plan from my end had been to do a complete wall off and then carry a rush, but I forgot to make my wall scary and impregnable. I just made it a wall. Yep. It almost worked, except for the bit where it didn't. So in the future, you could... You could keep a base there and make the carriers on this base. Well, up, up in the corner? Yes. Mm. But the Dark Templars are coming in, killing everything. I think it goes on for a while because I think we're just chatting in voice at this stage. Yeah. So, um, I think we've pretty much seen the game, and I... Yeah. Yes. I wish I knew how to fast forward on my on what I'm using to see replays. Oh no, I think this is the, this is the end. This is... Yes, we have, we have a... Ten seconds left. So Fuzzy fights to the very last. <laughs> and that is two zero to hero. Breaking my usual pattern of losing one and then coming back. Yeah. 